in chapter one, we looked at some of the terminology that we use to describe matter, the stuff of the universe that has both mass and volume. In chapter two, we're going to look at matter at a slightly more, well, actually, <laughs> incredibly more fundamental scale. Um, specifically, we're going to look at it from the point of view of, this, of the particles that make matter up. Now certainly everybody here at some point or another in their lives have heard the phrase that atoms are the building blocks of matter. Um, and that's partially true. Um, this whole idea of atoms came from a guy named Democritus. And Democritus was a Greek philosopher who lived way back in about 500 BC. And what Democritus said was that all of matter was composed of these things called atoms. Actually, he called it atomos, meaning indivisible. And basically what that meant was that he felt that if you were to take a, a brick of, say, gold, and you cut that brick in half, you get two pieces of gold. Um, both pieces are equally gold, just they're smaller. And if I take one of those halves and cut that in half, again, I wind up with gold. Um, and if I keep doing that over and over and over again, eventually what I'll do is I'll get to the point where I'll get to a particle so tiny that if I were to cut that in half, then I would no longer have gold. Okay, and at that point, we would have had to have cut into an atom. Okay, divided an atom, if you will. Okay, so Democritus had this idea, and unfortunately, many of his... Uh, his uh, fellow Greek philosophers, who had quite a bit of clout at that time, uh, that would be um, Aristotle or, or Plato, said basically, this is a bunch of junk. And in their defense, the way that Democritus presented atoms, um, I can understand why they would be a little bit leery about it. I mean, basically, what Democritus had presented was an idea, a thought. And for that reason, this idea kind of, um, kind of like, uh, died out over the years. It wasn't until the 1800s that a fellow by the name of John Dalton reintroduced this idea of atomos, or atoms. And what John Dalton did was, instead of just um, presenting this idea that there's these tiny particles that nobody can see that make up everything, he actually formulated it into a theory. And the theory was made up of a couple of different hypotheses, um, and the key was that these hypotheses could be tested. Okay, which gave us a starting point for figuring out whether or not he was right or wrong. Okay, so there were four different hypotheses that were built into this. Okay, the first hypothesis was that all elements are composed of tiny particles called atoms, which is very similar to Democritus' statement, um, but there was more to it. You see, uh, Democritus said that atoms of a given element are identical. Um, in other words, if I were to have a brick of gold, that that brick of gold would be made entirely of gold atoms. But we can also say that every single one of those gold atoms is indistinguishable from all the rest. They all have the same exact properties. They have the same mass, they have the same size, they have all the same chemical properties. Now, you'll remember that in the last chapter, um, we said that a compound was a substance that was made up of two or more elements. And according to Dalton's theory, um, every compound will always have the same ratio of atoms present. Um, for example, it's not enough to, uh, to say that water contains hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, it's important for hydrogen to have, I'm sorry, for there to be two hydrogens for every one oxygen. Um, this is important, especially when you compare water to something like H2O2, uh, which has a one-to-one -one ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, uh, and this is hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so it, it's important to realize that 
it's not just the identity, the identity of the elements, but it's also the ratio of those elements that matters. And finally, uh, Democritus said that chemical reactions are actually a process where atoms are being rearranged. Um, it's not like there were materials being destroyed or being produced. Um, we know that that's kind of against the laws of conservation of mass. Okay, you cannot produce, I'm sorry, you cannot create nor destroy matter, but we can change it. So a chemical reaction is just a reordering of atoms, bonds breaking and bonds forming and all that good stuff.